Hello, church. It's Pastor Jeremy coming to you from the Parsonage with another midweek devotion. Today, we continue our tour of the stained glass windows at the Court Street United Methodist Church as we look at one of the large windows in the sanctuary. When I ask people which of the windows at Court Street is their favorite, the window that people mention most often is the window of the Good Shepherd. It's not surprising that this window is so beloved. In this window, we see an image that has given people comfort since the earliest days of the Christian faith. As a matter of fact, the very earliest images that were ever made of Jesus depict him in this way, as the good shepherd tending his sheep. By now, we're used to the image of Jesus as a man with long hair and flowing robes and a beard. But that's not how the very first Christian artists depicted Jesus. The image of Jesus that we are used to didn't appear until the Christian faith had been around for hundreds of years. The earliest images of Jesus come from the catacombs in Rome, and in those frescoes and carvings we see Jesus as a young shepherd boy. This image of Jesus must have spoken to Christians in a powerful way, because it is the image of Jesus that is repeated most often in the catacombs and in early Christian art. These sketches of Jesus as a young Roman shepherd boy are symbolic. The people who made this art were not trying to show us Jesus as he appeared in the flesh. They were trying to show us the truth of who Jesus was to his followers. In John chapter 10, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, and I lay down my life for the sheep." Now, you can imagine that in the catacombs, in that place of death, the image of the Good Shepherd would have given the followers of Jesus a feeling of comfort and of peace. Jesus himself was willing to lay down his life, and after he tasted death, he rose up again. The image of the Good Shepherd reminded Christians that they would follow Jesus, the one who knows us and loves us, in death and in resurrection. There's another reason the Good Shepherd is the most common image in early Christian art. It was an image that people were used to. When they tried to create images of Jesus, the followers of Jesus didn't have a long tradition of Jewish art to draw upon. Jewish art didn't allow people to create images of other people. The laws of Moses warned against the dangers of creating images that might tempt people to worship idols. The followers of Jesus were creating a whole new artistic tradition. And like all artists, they borrowed from what they knew, and they adapted images that they were familiar with. The image of the young man carrying a sheep was a common image in pagan art. Greek and Roman artists had been creating images like this one for hundreds of years. In this image, we find a young man carrying a young ram to the altar of sacrifice. When we understand the history of this image, we begin to see that Christian artists did something sneaky and powerful and interesting when they borrowed this image and made it their own. In the pagan version of this picture, a young man carries a sheep to the altar so that he can sacrifice the sheep for the forgiveness of his sins. Christian art takes the same image and gives it a whole new meaning. When Christians depict Jesus in this way, we remember the words of Jesus who said, I am the good shepherd. I lay down my life for my sheep. Jesus doesn't sacrifice his flock to save himself. He sacrifices himself to save his flock. As the centuries go by, Christian artists changed this image and made it their own. The figure of Jesus became more elaborate, 
Instead of a young shepherd boy, he became a bearded man with a halo and robes. The sheep moved down from his shoulders, and now we can see in the stained glass window, Jesus cradles the sheep in his arms. It's clear that Jesus is not taking this sheep to be sacrificed, but instead he is embracing it in love. Jesus looks at the lamb with obvious affection, and the sheep brushing up against his leg is looking at Jesus with as much affection and trust as a sheep's face can show. And then there is this third sheep. Notice how the third sheep stares right out of the window at us. When I look at this window, I always wonder what this sheep is thinking and why the artist chose to portray this sheep in this way. Maybe the sheep is looking at us like that in order to connect us to this scene. When we look at this sheep and see his eyes looking back out at us, we become part of this scene. And the artist lets us know that we also are part of the flock. We also belong at the feet of the Good Shepherd. Or maybe when we look at this sheep, we see the sheep looking back at us the way we see our own reflection in a mirror. Maybe we are supposed to see ourselves in this sheep. It could be that this sheep is us. I'm not sure what the artist intended. All I know for sure is that this is a simple image with a long history and many layers of meaning. And you don't need to know all of that history, though, to look at this window and understand that this is an image of comfort and peace. I hope it gives you comfort to know that Jesus is with us, and he knows us, and he calls us by name. Would you pray with me? God of many pastures, you know us. You call us by name. Teach us to recognize the voice of Jesus, that we might follow him better. Through Christ the Good Shepherd we pray. Amen. Well, thank you for spending a little time with us today. You can find a new devotion here each Wednesday at noon. Until we meet again, keep washing your hands, keep wearing your mask, and do not be afraid.